What special effect does Madame Leota's tomb hold at the Haunted Mansion? And what secret thing can you find in the People Mover? We'll let you know all the Magic Kingdom secrets here on DFB Guide today. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and today we've got a ton, a ton. I think we have 37, 36, or 37 hidden secrets all over the Magic Kingdom to share with you today. All kinds of things you've got to look for, you've got to share with your family and friends, things that most people don't notice when they're just wandering through the kingdom. So let's get started. The first thing to share is about money, the coins tossed into wells and rides, and plenty of other places to toss those coins into water features and things like that. There is a Cinderella water feature behind Cinderella Castle as well. Anyway, if you ever wondered where all of that money goes, we've got the answer for you. All of those coins are regularly collected and are actually donated to children's charities in Central Florida, so don't feel bad about giving your kids some loose change to throw into the water features in Magic Kingdom, it's all going to a good cause. Next, let's talk about the phone in Le Chapeau. If you go into Le Chapeau, which of course is the hat shop in the Magic Kingdom, when you first walk into the Magic Kingdom, you'll find an old telephone in there. Now you can actually pick up that telephone and you may hear conversations from some of Main Street USA's residents. Currently the phone is out of order, sometimes it's out of order, but it usually gets fixed pretty soon. So if you're there, definitely pick up the phone and see if you can hear some of those party line conversations. Next up, the Harmony Barbershop. Also, when you first walk into the Magic Kingdom, this is a real barbershop. You actually can get your hair cut in here. The super cute thing about this is that they have a special first haircut package. So if you bring your kiddo into the Main Street Barbershop, they can get their first haircut, and then they can also, of course, get a certificate for their first haircut and a little Mickey ears hat that says first haircut on the back. And that will be a super special keepsake for that rite of passage that they went through at the Harmony Barbershop. You can make a reservation for this, so go ahead and make one so you don't have to wait in the long line. Older kids and adults can also get their hair cut here for a reasonable $18 or $19, so anyone can get their hair cut here at the Harmony Barbershop. It's not just a facade. All right, as you're walking down Main Street USA, look up and check out the signs on the windows. You'll catch tributes to different Imagineers who helped to create the Magic Kingdom. All over the place, there's Exitensio, Mary Blair, Herb Ryman, John Hench, Wally Boag, Roy Disney, of course, and plenty of others. And what's interesting about this is that their, their tributes on the windows will actually reference the work that they did for the Walt Disney Company. So it's really, really neat. All right, as you're walking down Main Street USA, you can sort of step down into that little side alley over to the right by the Crystal Arts Shop. And if you go all the way down that little alley, and if it's quiet enough in the kingdom that day, you might hear some of the citizens of Main Street practicing the piano or conducting voice lessons from the above shops. And of course, it is a music school. So you're gonna hear a few little extras coming out of the windows when you're over there in that little alleyway. Again, one of those things nobody would ever know unless they happen to be sitting back there for some reason. Okay, keep on walking down the street and you'll head over to Casey's Corner. You may be surprised that there is live music going on here at Casey's Corner multiple times a day. So this is usually going to be Jim, who's the pianist who's been here for over 30 years. He's a ragtime pianist. He does an excellent job and he's so much fun to watch. So definitely check out Jim. At the end of the day in the Magic Kingdom, each day at 5 p.m., there is a flag retreat ceremony to take down the one real American flag on Main Street. Now, we'll talk about the rest of the flags in just a second. Usually, a guest who is a veteran who is randomly selected by a cast member assists in that ceremony each day, and it's a really, really nice ceremony. Definitely something to put on your list if you are a veteran, if you have a veteran in your family, or if you just want to honor the work that they've done for us. All right, did you know there is an exclusive club in the Magic Kingdom? There absolutely is. The Magic Kingdom Club 33 has just opened a few months ago. This one is right as you walk into Adventureland, you will see a little gate on your right, and that is the entrance to Club 33. You'll actually even see a little RFID magic band reader right there that Club 33 members can put their magic band on and open that little gate and go into that Adventureland Magic Kingdom 
Kingdom Club 33. And again, this is only for Club 33 members. Nobody else is allowed in except for members and their guests. So this is a super exclusive location that is part of four different lounges around Walt Disney World, one in each park that makes up the full Walt Disney World Club 33. Of course, this stems from the original Club 33 in Disneyland that has a separate set of members. You actually have to be a member of both clubs. You don't kind of get to go back and forth across the country and use other clubs. But that's where the Club 33 originated was Walt's desire to have an exclusive location where he could entertain his friends and business colleagues in Disneyland. All right, also in Adventureland, you're gonna come across Skipper Canteen. Now, Skipper Canteen has all kinds of cool hidden sight gags all over the place because of course, this is the Jungle Cruise restaurant. But if you start to head into the SEA room, which is of course the secret dining room, which is part of the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, you're gonna walk through an area with some bookshelves, which is clearly the secret entrance to the SEA room. Now you gotta check out some of the titles on these bookshelves, because they are hilarious. The illustrated guide to radio broadcasting was composed by the skipper behind the voice of the jungle you hear in the Jungle Cruise queue, Albert A. Wall, A-W-O-L. Also on the shelf is Boat Evacuation Procedures by Cap Size. The Tiki Tiki Tiki's of the South Pacific is a nod to Disney legend and score composer Buddy Baker. And the Jungle Book is the only one book turned out in an angle indicating this is the book you would pull to gain access to this secret room. So this room is so expertly themed and designed. If you're eating at Skipper Canteen, we definitely request to eat in the SEA room. Next up, over in Pirates of the Caribbean, you will find a special chessboard as you're walking through the queue line. There are two skeletons playing chess, and rumor has it that they're locked in a stalemate and neither can win the game, which is why, of course, they're skeletons playing. Now, we've heard that sometimes cast members move the chess pieces, and it's been multiple different games that they've been playing, but that was the original plan was for it to be a stalemate. All right, that's Splash Mountain Hidden Mickey, one of my favorite Hidden Mickeys. Now, there are several Hidden Mickeys in Splash Mountain. Don't get me wrong, but I think this one is the coolest. So it's located right before the drop, the big drop that you're gonna go down on Splash Mountain. And if you look right to your left, you will notice Mickey's profile and his little nose sticking out right there above the castle as you're about to go over the big drop. This is one of my favorite Hidden Mickeys in all of Walt Disney World. <laughs> Okay, next up, the Hoedown Happening Show. So this show happens a few times a day, but it actually isn't listed in the Times Guide. You can always ask a cast member in the Frontierland area if you're hoping to catch it. So several Frontierland characters, like those from Country Bear, Jamboree, and Splash Mountain, actually come out and join in on the fun. So it's really, really fun. You see Br'er Bear and Br'er Rabbit and a couple of the Country Bears. It's really fun, but not something that you'd be able to plan for. Next up, the Liberty Square Riverboat Special Room. So the Liberty Bell is a great place to relax for about 20 minutes or so if you're looking for a really relaxing spot in the shade. Head to that second floor deck, the one you enter on, and head to the inside room. There's comfy booth seats, lots of artwork featuring New Orleans and the Mississippi River, and it's really cool. A lot of people don't even know it's there because they automatically go out to the railings. Also in Frontierland in Liberty Square, of course, is that brown river. We've talked about it on the channel a couple of times. There's a brown concrete patch sort of flowing through that area, and it's representative of the waste that would be flowing down the street in colonial times. Now, nobody's sure if this is just animal waste or if it's human waste and animal waste, because there weren't any bathrooms, of course, in colonial times. So that's what that is, just a heads up. All right, and once you get over to Haunted Mansion, we need to talk about that Haunted Mansion wedding ring. So when you're in the queue for Haunted Mansion, don't forget to look down for this special hidden secret. You will spot the bride's wedding ring stuck in the pavement, and it's located kind of near the water crypt that sprays you every so often, but it's right at the separation of the fast pass line to the standby line. So when they both sort of come together, that's where it's gonna be. I usually look for a big green trash can, and it's kind of right there by the big green trash can. And once you get to the front of the line for Haunted Mansion, you wanna definitely look over to your left and check out Madame Leota's gravestone just before you enter the mansion. If you look at that gravestone long enough, you might see her actually open her eyes and look around and then close her eyes again. It's really cool. There's no pomp or fanfare. It just happens really quietly. And if you don't look, you're gonna miss it. 
When you come out of the Haunted Mansion, you're gonna find Mr. Toad in the Pet Cemetery. Now, of course, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride was an original Disney World attraction, and they actually closed it down and replaced it with the Winnie the Pooh ride. So, Mr. Toad is only in Disneyland now. He's no longer in Disney World, but you can find a couple of tributes to him. And the first is there in the Haunted Mansion Pet Cemetery. You'll see a Mr. Toad gravestone up there. And then, of course, the second tribute to Mr. Toad is gonna be over there in the Winnie the Pooh ride, where you will see Mr. Toad handing the deed to the ride to Owl when you first go through the first set of doors when you're on the ride. Okay, so when you head over to the Tangled Bathrooms or the Tangled Restrooms from Haunted Mansion, there's a lot to check out in this area. Of course, there's a bunch of phone chargers in the tree stumps around the Tangled Bathrooms area, and you're also gonna find some hidden Pascals. You'll look around in the plants and the water surrounding these bathrooms, you might even see Pascal hiding there. This is a great one for the kiddos. And when you get into Fantasyland, you're of course gonna look for that sword and the stone. This is a special secret that a lot of people don't realize. It's an actual show that happens multiple times per day. So over in front of the carousel, you'll find that sword and the stone, and many people will try to pull the sword from the stone, but only those who are worthy can actually do it. And FYI, the worthy ones usually end up being little kids. The sword might be missing when you're there, but we think it's back now as we're making this video. Sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not, but if it is there, they might do a little show around it and your kid might be able to be the one who pulls the sword out of the stone. All right, next up, those Little Mermaid hidden Mickeys. You're gonna find this in New Fantasyland. The Little Mermaid ride is full of lots and lots of hidden Mickeys, but outside, before you even get into the ride, you can actually see some great ones. There's a hidden Steamboat Willie and a hidden Nautilus outside of the ride. Steamboat Willie is made up of multiple rocks to the left of the ride's exit, and you can spot the Nautilus in the rocks as you enter the queue line. Now, of course, the Nautilus is a reference to the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea ride that used to be here before they bulldozed it and built New Fantasyland. All right, when you ride the People Mover, this is of course one of our favorite rides, the Wedway People Mover in Tomorrowland. There is a model of Walt's original plans for Epcot on the ride, so you can see what Walt originally envisioned for that experimental prototype community of tomorrow, which of course is what Epcot stands for. And it's really fascinating. It's something I stare at every time I'm on that ride because it's really cool to kind of see. Now, something to note in Magic Kingdom, that there are some Magic Kingdom only characters. There are some characters you're only really gonna see at Magic Kingdom, except for maybe some specialty events or something like that outside of Magic Kingdom. So Gaston is going to be over there by Gaston's Tavern. Mickey and Minnie in their celebration costumes will be there through September 30th. The Fairy Godmother and Anastasia and Drizella are there behind the castle. Now you can also once in a while see them over at 1900 Park Fair, but they are at Magic Kingdom pretty consistently. Aladdin is in Magic Kingdom. Now Jasmine's at Epcot, but Aladdin really is only seen in Magic Kingdom. You can meet Tinkerbell, Rapunzel, Tiana, Elena, Cinderella, and Ariel at those specialty meet and greets. Merida has a specialty meet and greet here. Peter Pan, Pooh, and Tigger. They are really all only seen at Magic Kingdom. Okay, let's talk quickly about those flags on Main Street. So except for that main flag on the big flagpole in Town Square, none of the other flags on Main Street are truly American flags. And here's why. If it was an actual American flag with all the correct number of stars and stripes, it would have to be lowered each day and taken down. And so all of those flags lining Main Street USA are either missing a star or a stripe so that they only look like American flags, but they're not official. Now let's head over to the Jungle Cruise in Adventureland. And here, as you're going through the Jungle Cruise, you'll see a half of an airplane. They often make a few jokes about this. Note that this is a plane that was actually cut in half by Disney, and the other half was being used as part of the now-closed Great Movie Ride in the Casablanca scene. If you guys remember that front half of that airplane at the Casablanca scene, the back half is over there on the Jungle Cruise. If you head into Pinocchio Village House. This is one of my favorite, favorite hidden secrets because this is really fun for the kids. You go into the dining area all the way to the left and back and you'll find a book that's called the Village House Wish Book. And kids can write down a wish for the Blue Fairy to grant here. So it's really fun to sort of scan through what other kids have wished and also write your own wishes here in the wish book. 
All right, let's head back to Liberty Square for a little bit. First of all, that Liberty Square live oak. The huge live oak in Liberty Square is a very old tree. It's over 100 years old. And you'll notice it has 13 lanterns hanging from its branches, which of course is to represent the 13 original colonies. So that's a good little piece of information for your kids who are missing school to go to Disney World. Now there are some lanterns in the window as well. If you look up at the houses in Liberty Square, you can spot a pair of lanterns in one of the windows. This is to warn that the British are coming by sea. So if you remember your American history, one if by land, two if by sea. And we'll head back over to Tony's Town Square restaurant right at the front of the park. You might see some paw prints in the cement. Now, of course, Lady and the Tramp are the mascots of Tony's Town Square restaurant, and those paw prints are theirs, and you'll see them inside of a little heart right on the cement. Heading over to the Carousel of Progress in Tomorrowland. Everybody knows this is a wonderful ride, a very historical ride. There is actually a hidden photo of Walt Disney on the Carousel of Progress, and you'll be able to spot this in the daughter's bedroom. And there's also at least four hidden Mickeys in the final scene of this ride, so you'll spot them in the gifts and on the kitchen counter. So be sure to keep your eyes open in Carousel of Progress for some hidden secrets as well. Speaking of the Carousel of Progress, the grandmother from the Carousel of Progress can be found in another attraction at Magic Kingdom. You can actually see her in the ballroom scene of the Haunted Mansion. Poor grandma. If you exit the Haunted Mansion and you're there around nighttime, don't forget to look up because every once in a while you might just see something or someone walking in front of the upstairs window at the mansion. So there's a little ghost story for you to tell your family. Over in Tomorrowland, they have those metal palm trees, which I absolutely love, and they have a really fun backstory. They're supposed to be an invention of the Tomorrowland Power Company, and they collect solar energy and store it in the coconuts. So if you see a tree without coconuts, that means the energy has already been harvested. Now, obviously, they're not really solar energy collecting trees. That would be very cool. Of course, Disney World does have big solar panel fields that you can sometimes spot from the roadways and monorail, but these trees are not collecting solar energy. But that is what they represent. Now here's another one of my favorites. This is a Cinderella fountain. If you go behind Cinderella Castle, you're gonna find a fountain with a statue of Cinderella sitting in the center of the fountain and a mural or painting behind her. Now, if you're an adult, you'll look at it and it just looks like there's Cinderella in a fountain and a mural behind her. But if you're a kid and looking at it from a kid's height, you can actually see that from a certain perspective, that crown that's in the mural sits on top of Cinderella's head, the Cinderella statue's head. So it's basically saying that even though she's not in her ball gown because in this particular statue Cinderella is in her Cinderella clothes the clothes that she wore when she was the servant to her stepmother and stepsisters but she's still wearing that crown she's still a princess even though she's not in her ball gown and this one's really fun if you stay until the very end of the night at park closing and you wait on Main Street you'll see something that most guests never see it's called the kiss goodnight this isn't something you'll see at any other Disney park it's only at Magic Kingdom and it's a nice little send-off that thanks you for visiting the Magic Kingdom and has a little light show on the castle. And of course, Mickey thanks you for coming as well. So that's a really fun little thing to stick around to see at the very end of the night. Now we wanted to mention a few pieces of retired magic, things that used to be special secrets of the Magic Kingdom but have since been done away with, which we think is really sad. The first is when you used to be able to wake up Tinkerbell. The Castle Couture store used to be called Tinkerbell's Treasures and the first child in the store each day would get to wake up Tinkerbell with a little bell and she would fly out of the cupboard that she was sleeping in. And that was always so much fun, but unfortunately you can't do that anymore. And another one of my favorites are the paint brushes on Tom Sawyer Island. There used to be hidden paint brushes on Tom Sawyer Island that would be put up by cast members each day and the first guests to find them and bring them back to a cast member would receive a special prize, usually an extra fast pass. Unfortunately, this goes in the this is why we can't have nice things pile because people would just steal the paintbrushes rather than turn them in. So we couldn't do that anymore in Magic Kingdom. Overall, there are a bunch of great secrets and hidden treasures to look for in the Magic Kingdom when you're there with your family. Please let us know in the comments some others that you know about or even let us know your favorites from this list. We can't wait to hear what you guys think. And as always, thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. We'd love for you to like this video. Give us a subscribe. You can subscribe just by clicking that little logo in the lower right hand corner. And then don't forget to hit the notification bell so we can let you know when we have another video from DFB Guide. This is AJ from Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.